Welcome to North Carolina. Four words I never thought I would say in relation to such a large industry event. But we're here at ConnectX, the first inaugural ConnectX, and we could not be happier to host all of you. As, you said, as the voice above said, my name is Danny Agresta, and I'm the president of the Carolinas Weather Association. I've been president for the last seven years. On behalf of the board, all of our sponsors, and the 1,300 members, we welcome you to the Queen City of Charlotte. Let me tell you a little bit about the association and our relationship with WIA. Our mission from the start has been to be a unified voice in state and local legislative matters impacting industry and to serve a central repository for collection and distribution of news information to our members. We've had a great, we made great strides in accomplishing the mission through our regulatory committee led by Liz Hill and through our membership with WIA. I believe it's about our fourth year of membership at the state uh, wireless association level and it's been a great partnership. But we're not all business. We do have fun, but we have fun with a purpose. We host events every quarter that bring our members together through education, networking, and charity fundraising. In fact, just last week, some of you may have attended our 13th annual charity golf event uh, with that, that 350 CW members attended, enjoyed the Pinehurst courses one, five, eight, and two. At that event, we raised $30,000 in five hours to, for our charity partner, Victory Junction, a camp for kids with special needs or serious illnesses that normally would not be able to enjoy a camp experience. Through the years, we've raised almost $150,000 for the amazing organization that started in 2004 by Paul Newman and the Petty family, the Nescar fame. Lastly, don't forget about the opening reception in the exhibit hall this evening. Uh, that starts at 5.30. CWA will be, is a supporting sponsor, and we look forward to seeing you there. On behalf of the board, myself, I want to thank Jonathan uh, for another great year of partnership with the CWA. And without any further ado, I want to introduce the music enthusiast, president, and CEO, Jonathan Edelstein. Well, thanks, Danny, and good morning, everybody. Thank Good to see you all out here. Uh, welcome to the biggest and best show WIA has, has ever put on. And uh, for those of you, I saw some of you at the tin roof last night at about midnight. Uh, so congratulations for those of you who made it out this early. And of course, all of you got up and sang. We had live karaoke and uh, a lot of great singing going on. Uh, I want to share with you at the beginning uh, how we came up with a name for this event. You know, we were sitting around chatting about it and uh, some argued against it. They said, you know, who wants to link up with their divorced spouse or connect X? But, you know, we said, that's okay. You know, that's what Facebook is for. <laughs> that is, if you don't mind the Russians watching. After we came through that discussion, we got more serious. We said, you know, we created connect X because we see a lot of convergence. We, we see that we want to bring together every element of the growing wireless ecosystem that we're all part of. We want to bring together, you know, the macro structures that rise <clears throat> high into the air. We want to bring together the, the small cells. We want to bring the fiber that's under the ground, the, the, the densification that's happening, uh, the world of data centers, the world of connected automobiles, and of course, you know, all the technology for public safety that we're really focused on here at this show today. For those of you who know WIA, you know that we want to stay on the forefront of technology. We want to keep on the edge. And we're here to collaborate and have the best minds in the industry come together to, to think about you know, what the future holds and, of course, just to see old friends and have a, have a good time. We know this is a, a great industry. Everybody's in a really good mood. Business is good, which is good for you. It's good for us. Uh, it, it makes a happy mood at our show. And we're all, I think, very fortunate. You know, we're fortunate to be in such a great industry and we're fortunate to be here at such an exciting time. And of course, we've had a lot of exciting times in this industry. So above all, ConnectX is about connectivity. It became clear to us uh, years ago that there was a massive convergence happening uh, in what we might call the connectivity sector. An infrastructure industry that was traditionally known for steel and concrete began to uh, diversify. You were pursuing opportunities indoors, uh, adding fiber and data. Uh, center assets. Of course, carriers were moving beyond just operations into delivering content. Uh, utilities were adding smart grid antennas, uh, the cable industry, auto manufacturers, agriculture, sports and entertainment, uh, all were working to achieve the same thing, along with public safety, ubiquitous high-speed connectivity. And so we evolved too, and the show 
evolve with it. The other thing we observed is that, you know, despite all these advances in the technology and the fact you can get all this information about the latest on the internet, people still and always will want to get together and do business face to face so that you can see each other, know each other, get to trust one another, and truly partner. So this event's not only about connectivity in terms of, of the wireless world, but it's about the connections that we make when we're together. And we bring together a, a great group of people. Uh, we believe that it's the central role of a trade association to, to bring you all here, to connect with new ideas and new opportunities, and uh, we provide that forum for you to innovate, to think ahead, to work together to solve big problems and to evolve, and what we ultimately do is improve people's lives through better wireless service. So our goal for this event is to convene as many potential partners as we possibly can under one roof. And if you look around, you see, you know, we have public safety here, data centers, IOT, fiber, uh, big real estate, small cells, macro towers, connected vehicles, smart cities, uh, all of it that you need, spectrum, hardware, software, it's all here. And if that weren't enough, we're helping you to improve your workforce and your supply chain. So programming here, uh, as you know, is going to focus on smart cities and connected communities, macro cell towers and edge infrastructure, private LTE networks, connected real estate, vehicle to vehicle uh, and vehicle to infrastructure, uh, critical LTE, and of course, uh, innovations in infrastructure. So we have a heck of a lineup, and we're going to host uh, workshops as well on workforce development, data centers, and first net. So we have some uh, amazing keynote speeches. We have some path-breaking panels that we're offering and other forums that bring together the best minds of the industry. And we'll cover more ground than any event has ever done in our space. So we're thrilled to have the chairman of the FCC here, Ajit Pai, who's done so much to help our industry. And soon this morning, we'll hear from FCC Commissioner Michael O'Reilly, who's also been a real champion of, of broadband infrastructure. And they'll tell us about their plans to maximize how wireless infrastructure can help grow the entire economy. And we're excited to hear later from a true visionary. Tomorrow, Charlie Ergen will be here, a co-founder and chairman of the Board of Directors of DISH, of course. And we'll hear from a lot more great innovators here. Shortly, we'll hear from uh, uh, Satya Yadav from Amazon Web Services and Steve Worling from NASCAR. And someone who's not just an innovator in public safety, but is a real hero, uh, former police commissioner for the city of Boston, Ed Davis, who led the response to the Boston Marathon tragedy. And of course, the exhibit hall is, is packed. We have a great exhibit hall this year. Uh, we have leading companies from across the ecosystem um, showing off their most advanced uh, technology and services and products. And we have some big announcements that are happening here, we're proud to say. So you can see the real reality of what's behind those announcements in the exhibit hall. We're also hosting our third annual Supplier Diversity Summit, which is a it's an organization, it's, a, it's an effort that uh, partners qualified veteran, woman, and minority-owned businesses with uh, the largest companies in the business. Their procurement officials are here to talk about how to do business. And you know, you, small business representatives meet with the largest contractors in the industry, and we're hearing that a lot of real deals have come out of the first two years, so we're hoping to hear a lot more good news stories coming out of this year. Of course, our job for you is to be the voice of the industry in Washington. We are your advocate, uh, and in states across the country as well. The FCC, and as we'll hear soon, and Congress and the White House are all doing everything they can to promote wireless infrastructure as the key to widespread deployment of broadband. They've really done a lot. They're not just talking about it like you hear a lot of talk out of Washington. They're actually doing something about it. The FCC uh, has put our issues front and center. Uh, we have. We're going to hear exactly what they're doing from uh, Commissioner Pye and Chairman O'Reilly, but they're taking major actions to reduce barriers to broadband deployment. They just approved an order this spring to get rid of a lot of reviews of small cells for historic and environmental review. They, we finally convinced the FCC uh, to deal with the Twilight Towers issue that's been haunting us for years, and those assets will be good to work for the industry, and Mike O'Reilly was a big, a big advocate of getting that done. In the FCC's Broadband Deployment Advisory Committee, on which I serve, and a number of other members of WIA are involved, uh, is working on key issues for the industry as well. And in front of Congress, we have a lot of issues. We're working to create laws that encourage uh, co-location, and we did that in 2012. You've seen a huge difference in the deployment of 4G as a result. The FCC implemented that law with the most effective regulations possible. And we continue to work on tighter shot clocks and speeding uh, wireless infrastructure deployment. 
So Congress and the White House are listening to us. They're listening to the industry and working to help us. We're making real progress from tax reform to job training and the recent enactment of the budget bill that included a bunch of provisions of interest to the wireless industry, including deployment on federal lands, getting more spectrum out. So WI is making progress on the Hill as well. We, we also uh, got progress on the FAA bill. You might have heard there was a costly mistake in the bill that uh, meant we had to build a bunch of paint and mark a bunch of towers in rural areas. And the House just passed a fix, I'm happy to announce, and the Senate's po poised to follow suit. That's going to save the industry $250 million. Hope that's a pretty good return on, on your dues. <laughs> We've also spent a lot of time this year outside of Washington. We are in state capitals. We have lobbyists in almost every state capital where legislation has been considered. And so far, 20 states, as you can see here, have passed laws to expedite the deployment of wireless infrastructure. And they've been very careful about how they do it. They expedite certain projects while retaining thoughtful zoning for others like towers. And these new laws follow our industry supported framework. We got together with the industry and we came up with a language that will cite wireless facilities in a sustainable and responsible manner. And we're just getting started. And while we're at it, we hear a lot of issues from you about workforce development. There's a shortage of skilled labor to do the job of building these huge networks. Everybody's ramping up and yet we don't have the staff we need to get it done. I hear time and again. So we're working with the Telecommunications Industry Registered Apprenticeship Program, or TIRAP. We now, uh, since WI has taken over as a national sponsor, have 20 employers that are involved in the program. So we're going to bring apprenticeship into this industry for the first time. That translates into more than 1,500 apprentices in our industry. It's a good start and there's a long way to go. And to support that, we also created the Telecommunications Education Center, or TECH. TECH's a training education and professional development system that we helped develop with a lot of great input from the leaders in the industry, subject matter experts, academics, and, and of course uh, an advisory group of some of the largest companies in the sector. It's really the first of its kind and it's already delivering programs. We have training available right now that uh, you can find out more about them at our, uh, at our exhibit in the, in the exhibit hall, the WIA booth. Another thing we're working on is the Innovation Technology Council, which is putting out all kinds of great research. We thank all the members of that. We have uh, members from uh, dozens of companies that are members producing priceless research for the industry. The latest papers are tackling 5G. They're looking at workforce development and training solutions. Another one is coming out soon. Uh, the working groups are looking into the role of wireless infrastructure in, in smart communities. So we hope you'll get involved. You'll get a chance to look at that. All of those reports are available on our, on our website. So we are, uh, you know, doing tremendous work getting ready for 5G. 4G build out is going, I think, in preparation for that. And you're delivering all these benefits to consumers, all this demand. You're the ones who are making it possible. That's why I'm so proud to lead this organization because we have such a great group of folks like you that are dedicated to getting this job done. You're here to get that little extra edge. And I know that without the networks that you design, deploy, and maintain, we wouldn't have Uber, we wouldn't have HBO Go, we wouldn't have all of these great things. And I can't even imagine all the advances that we're going to see with 5G. The future is unlimited, and we're going to be hearing about the details of it here at this show. And for fun, we got a big event tonight. Uh, we have a, a fundraiser for a, movement, a music movement, which is a charity that uh, helps kids uh, with autism through music. And we're going to have a little fun uh, making some music ourselves. Our industry band is going to open up. The band plan coming on at 8. No, we're coming on at 7, actually. I might have been late for that show. Uh, we, we, uh, we, uh, it's going to be at Rooftop 210, so hopefully uh, we can see you all out there tonight. Uh, we're uh, just the opening act. The main act, we have Billy Dawson coming and uh, great country artist Lee Bryce. So I know, I know how busy you all are, and we really appreciate the fact that you took time out of your busy schedule, hopefully to get a little edge here, hopefully to reconnect with your colleagues and recharge for the exciting future that's ahead. And uh, you know, we designed this event so that every minute is another opportunity to build your business. Every panel or keynote, every meeting, every conversation over lunch or drinks could present you with a new business opportunity. Our goal is to make sure this is the most valuable event that you attend all year. And I hear a lot of you say that, and that works because you keep coming back and you tell your friends about it. So again, I want to thank our sponsors who really made this entire show possible, a lot of generosity. And of course, those sponsorships ultimately are used to help us fund the advocacy that we do year in and year out for you all. 
Again, thanks for coming to the show and we're excited to have you here.